like that. It's like a Dan's gonna miss on like ready to have an expedient meeting because I was like, I just came from straight from Albany here. I didn't realize the front door would be locked. I, I turned my phone off my phone. We won't miss I I did. No, I did give you an call. I did give you an call. Because my phone is so thick. Yeah. Sure. Put on, do not disturb. All right. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to go now. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, and welcome to the City of Oneonta Planning Commission meeting. Uh, for the month of February. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody also attending via YouTube. So, um, could, could you please call roll uh, members? Chair Levin. Here. Commissioner Mouskin. Commissioner Stanton. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. Commissioner Denny. Here. Commissioner Mulder. Here. Commissioner Sandy. Here. Thank you. Council members. Here. Oh, thank you. Okay, so. Um, Next on the agenda is the approval of the January 19th, 2022 minutes. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review them? Uh, is there a motion to approve? Oh. Motion made by Commissioner Marino. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Thomas. Any further discussion? I guess we could just do a voice vote. So we'll do a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Motion is approved. Uh, Carrie, is there any correspondence? Uh, we have one item of correspondence, but it's in regards to an application for later today. Okay, and I also received correspondence via text message and email it's related to an application, so we'll kind of defer that. Um, are there any petitioners here to address the Planning Commission tonight? Okay. Um, old business, I believe we have um, the Vander Salmon. Um, application. It's for the uh, subdivision of the parcels um, 32 to 38 Rose Avenue. Is there Mr. Vander Simon here to discuss? I'm here to represent Mr. Vander Simon. I'm, I'm Roger Moran. Great. Um, okay, so I believe here we had a, um, during our last meeting, um, I believe. We had some questions. We had an initial like, kind of preliminary conference about um, the proposed subdivision. We under, kind of understand what Mr. Vanderson is trying to do. He's trying to sell the property. Does anybody have any questions since the last meeting for Mr. Moran regarding the proposed subdivision? So in terms of next steps, we have to classify the action under seeker in your state environmental quality review act um, we have a short environmental assessment form i think the action is unlisted, unlisted action um, and so with unlisted action with an unlisted action we have to determine if it would require a coordinated review which would mean which would mean like a review by other agencies such as new york state department of environmental conservation DOT, New York State Department of Transportation, et cetera. Um, we would also, you know, need to look at kind of what's in the EAF. In the one thing that I did notice in the application is that a lot, large portion of the proposed subdivision resides within a 100-year floodplain, meaning that, you know, and with, that it would be subject to, you know, an increased risk of flooding and may face insurance issues going forward as a result you know, of its location within the floodplain. That was really the only environmental issue that I, that I noticed. There were a few landlocked parcels in which we had discussed um, last meeting, you know, and land you know, Commissioner Dagen came with special attention to. Does anybody else have any, identify any other issues with the EAF? Let's see it's on an archaeological site. I don't know how to affect this from the PAF map or summary. It's all the archaeological site. Yeah, basically anything close to Fort, like anything in that kind of New Island area always pertains as archaeologically significant. Yeah, I mean, I think that in the case of this application, that you know, a future owner of the property who wishes to do excavation would likely need to do like a phase 1A. 
uh, archaeological investigation through SHIPA, the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, so I think that since the action, proposed action is you know merely relates to the subdivision, I don't believe that we need to send the application to any other agency. Do we feel comfortable classifying the action as an unlisted action requiring not with well, no coordinated review necessary? Yeah, I don't see why. Is there, uh, is there a, uh, I have a motion to that effect? So, a uh, motion made by Commissioner Sangeti Daniels to classify the proposed subdivision action as an unlisted action that does not require coordinated review. Seconded by Commissioner Stanton. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk, could you please call the roll? Chair Lappin? Yes. Vice Chair Marino? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? I'm standing. Commissioner Dyson? Yes. Commissioner Sandy Daniels? Yes. So next is the review action on the proposed subdivision as presented. And there are a series of required maps and documents and, you know, as per the city's subdivision, uh, city code related subdivisions. You know, but the planning commission can, does have the authority to say, determine that the applicant has complied with the spirit of the subdivision code. So that gives us latitude to not require, you know, the submission of all those detailed maps that are inherent within the subdivision application. You know, maybe it's kind of a way out for folks. Um, because our sub the subdivision code on its face is designed for a much either a newly rapidly developing city that's planning street grids and other things, or hey, well, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, you know, uh, in certain circumstances, or a much, you know, more complicated application such as one we may see in the only on our rail yards, for instance. Um, so, with that said, um, I will, does any of the other commissioners have questions about the proposed, um, I guess, preliminary plaque related to the subdivision? Or any questions about the subdivision in general? Okay. Um, hearing, again, you know, I think the main thing is to be, you know, that I would recommend Mr. Moran is, you know, to be conscious of the, you know, location within the 100-year floodplain. But if the property owner wishes to, you know, Mr. Van der Sommen wishes to subdivide his property, I think that, you know, I don't really have an issue with, in particular with that desire, but there is that constraint on the property, and I just wanted to make sure that you're, you and Mr. Van der Sommen are aware of that. I'll um, communicate that to him. So, with that said, do I have a motion to approve the subdivision application as presented? Make motion made by Commissioner Marino. Do I have a second? Yes, sir. Seconded by Commissioner Dygan. Is there any further discussion? Just in order to be clear, so he's turning three parcels into four. That's what, what we're doing here. I think there is a V five parcel. Yeah, it looks like there's it looks like according to the subdivision map. Looks like I see four. Okay. Um it looks like he has it's kinda like two properties right now, two parcels right now. So well, he's got well he's got three. I don't think that map is really what it actually is. I can show you. I have a little larger map if you okay, folks would like to look helpful. at it. It actually is a, a four parcel. Uh, it, the way that I think it was originally set up, the original survey, there were two uh, parcels A and B. And then you know, what he created was Catching here. Yeah. And then I can just pass this around. So parcel one 
is here, and this is the tennis club, and this is 0.675 acres right here with about 80 feet of road frontage. And if you look at the original uh, design here, here's parcel A with 3.256 acres and parcel B with 4.622 acres. Parcel B is going to remain as it is um, according to his design. So parcel 1 is the tennis club, 0 0.675. Then parcel two would be the house that attaches in the back, and that's 0.623 acres. According to his scale, that looks like you'd have about 10 feet of road frontage with this one on Rose Avenue. With parcel um, one, you'd have 80 feet of road frontage. Then parcel three is the 1.958 acre, um, and this has the uh, the club, the basically outdoor facility, which is the the outdoor tennis court and the swimming pool and the cabana. And this has 20 feet of road frontage on Rose Avenue according to the scale of the map. And then parcel B is back here, this largest parcel, 4.622. And there's two accesses here, both on either side of 19 um, Sand Street. This is a 20 foot um, deeded access point and this is a 10-foot deeded access point here. The 20-foot access point, I think, is much more logical. If you're ever going to really utilize it and access it, if you ever ride down there and you come either way, if you come through the bridge on Railroad Avenue and you turn right, you know, this is the first thing you'd see. There's actually a gate back here after you get off uh, this property. There's a gate and there's another gate at, at this location as well. Uh, but coming down here, getting to this area, this is a, a nice wide swath and a nice access point to this. And I think that if you're looking at the, the archaeological area, I would imagine this is where you're, you'd be more, most concerned because this is where it's most undeveloped. You know, the rest of it is, is quite developed. So, so if you folks want to... For some purpose of clarity, this might be a Stephen question, but the uh, parcel A and B on this on this sheet that he's passing around. Those are actually, those are not real, those are not currently existing parcels. So I would have to clarify with Paul, because I think that this actually, Roger, do you know if this was, this parcel A and B, were these ever actually subdivided into that A and B? I don't, I think that if you read the survey map I lost, and I think they also were proposed, but I never, on the map that I have, it was never, stamped as accepted. So I think it was proposed because I don't think he wanted to go to the point of doing the whole subdivision if he didn't get the approval. And I, I think then it carries to the four parcel idea as well. Yeah, so, so I think you're correct in the that. The county mapper still has a three. Mm -hmm. I don't know how accurate that is. But yeah. Yeah. See it on the bigger map, yeah. so they're actually filed uh, even points. Yeah, I can show them. Mm -hmm. So that folks who 
Well, I wish to develop the property in the future to be easily aware of uh, the development potential of that particular site. So we do have a motion and a second to approve the subdivision application as presented. There was discussion. Um, are we ready to vote? Okay. Uh, quickly, please call roll. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Abstain. Commissioner Duncan. Yes. Commissioner Shane Getty Daniels. Yes. Passes. Thank you. Um, I can come in and sign the date for my last copy tomorrow. I'll be here. Or Friday. Whichever. Oh, whenever he comes in. Yeah, I'll look him up. Just email me. I'll come in and sign it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moran. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, everyone. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, number two on the agenda is Eric Randazzo. Uh, okay, great. Let's, uh, why don't you come up front and tell us about your application? Sure. So, hi, everyone. My name is Eric. Um, I'm in the process of purchasing 42 River Street, which is previously the Fody Bread Bakery right there. Um, in hopes of renovating it into a full service restaurant. Um, and part of the renovation process, it's all going to be pretty cosmetic interior, just a couple demoing walls and really just opening it up to make it a really great space for everyone. Uh, but I would like to, this application pertains to creating a vestibule on the front just to protect the main diners that are going to be right there so that you have to enter two doorways as opposed to one a cold winter night. You're not just blasting the dining room with cold air. So that's what tonight's my application is about. We have, I emailed schematics in to, I think, Stephen, I don't want him with me. I guess I probably should have, but it's a pretty small, about 90 square foot addition that would go right in front of the building. Um, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. With, uh, you know, it's going to match the facade of the building, bricks, uh, masonry. We can finish it in whatever, whatever color I really like the facade and the look of the building as is. So probably just going to be a nice red finish or red stain just to match the Fody look that it has right now. Are you currently own the property? Yeah. We're closing right now. We're in the closing, hoping to close like mid-March at the latest. Pretty close. All right. That's exciting. It's a good infill. You know, it's a good infill project. There's Neighborhood. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's a project I've been working on for a little over a year, just kind of scoping things out for the right location. And when I stumbled upon this one, I mean, I've been working with Roger. He's the listing agent for the property. Um, we've been working on it for <laughs> closing in on six months or so now, but we're getting there steadily. But I, I, you know, I'm really excited to come to Oneana and be part of the, you know, the hospitality restaurant scene down here. That's great. Do we have the authority to approve if he doesn't yet? Yeah. Uh, I, I have the schematics. I thought they had been sent as part of the packet. Do you want to email them? I'm, about, I'm literally doing it right so now. We can yeah. just hold on. We can just have the schematics printed out and so we can all take a look yeah, at sure. it. Yeah, sure. You could just put them on the TV, right, Carrie? If you're emailing, you can put it right on there. Yeah, you could just put it on the TV. Yeah, okay, okay. Is, that, is everybody fine with that? Yeah. Um, how do you use the computer? <laughs> <laughs> so the other, um, what I will say is, I just you know, parking is constrained at that site, and so we have questions about how many seats you would have, but the Planning Commission also has the ability to require or not require as much or as little parking as we wish. Sure. So the, so the front of the building does have parking for probably like three or four spots, but another really nice perk about the property is that it has a back lot um, that has probably room for another 10 to 12 vehicles and room to add paving that we could add another, accommodate probably 20 total. Um, I don't, for pers personally, I think it's in a walkable neighborhood. Yeah. I don't believe that any other additional parking would be required. Yeah, it'd be great if we don't have to, for um, sure. And that would just add on cost to your project. Right. right. So. There's on street parking. Yeah, there's on street, there's plenty of on street yeah. parking, and I think that the you know, minimum parking requirements would just have to uh, Maybe so the potential in general. Sure. That shows it. I mean, there is uh, uh, so parking lot yeah. yeah. already. So, oh, he's got what that. Is the, um, 
Yeah, it's that little, I mean, it's just that little bump out you can see on the Yeah, so if you want to scroll down, it's like a six-page document. The schematics are going to be all the way, for the schematics for the uh, vestibular at the bottom. But if you want to see what the floor plan is going to look like, they're up there, too. So yeah, it's pretty non-intrusive. Probably comes out six or seven feet in like less than 100 square feet addition. So these are the two, these are the two like main windows that are there now. It's not even a, yeah, that's nice. I'm just gonna kind of build out same brick masonry and just nice windows that, to fill it out and a glass door. And again, the whole point of it is just, it's gonna be more energy efficient this way and it helps protect the guests who are sitting in the dining room from getting blasted with cold air. The reason this is here is because in the ME2 district, any addition requires site plan review. So it's a pretty it's a pretty minor addition. Uh -huh. And so like I had a question about the sign, like what materials will you be using? So right now, if you guys are all familiar with it, it's kind of just painted on. And I plan on kind of doing the same thing, just either painting over the logo that's on there right now or scraping it off and doing it flat. But it's just going to be paint on paint, paint on brick. And then maybe just getting some like nice gooseneck, gooseneck lighting to illuminate it at night and make it visible. But it's not going to be like LED or anything. I really like the idea of just being nice, bold. Uh, Are you going to keep the character uh, old fashioned? Yeah, definitely. I love that. It really spoke to me. I, I, I love the feeling of the, of, the, of the building because of that aesthetic. It's, you're not, it, it's going to look like it was part of the original, that vestibule, you know. You're, it'll, really, it'll really look nice on that. If I can add just one thing, I, you know, I've, I've worked with Eric for six months and, or more, and I think he is, you're the planning commission, you just need to know. I mean, he, he is probably one of the finest people that I've worked with from the beginning because he's done so much homework and he has spent so much money. He, he has uh, employed an architect, um, you know, he's had a lot of work done before that most people would never even think of. Um, I mean, he's a really good planner and I think it's going to be a really, it's an exciting project uh, for that area. He's done a really, really fine job up Appreciate to this that. point. Thank you. So, thought I'd add that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Stephen, we do have a, we can approve this, even though it hasn't closed yet. I mean, seeking site plan approval. So, I mean, you could approve a site plan, and then you could say. And it, it and this is totally like preliminary. It'd be great to get as much approval as we can at this point. But this is really just so that when I approach my general contractors, they know whether or not this is going to be part of the renovation process, and if I can, if I should be budgeting for it, and. That's, or the, so, I mean, for example, like uh, the deeds project, like the site plan was essentially approved before we actually, before the city had actually um, closed them. I don't believe site control is required. Yeah. Um, for being a DRI project, on the other hand, it is, but no, it's not that. So. Um, let's see. we approved. We got to do secret first. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love the energy. I try. I try. Well, yeah. well, you don't have to just be preferred. Oh, no. I was going to say it's not really the same board. You get it every walk. Then we'll be clear to type 2 action. Right. Um, so that'd be type 2 action under such seeker section 617.5, not part 9, which pertains to the construction or expansion of a primary or an accessory you know, non-residential structure facility involving less than 4,000 square feet. It could just be part 617.5, part 9. We'll leave it at that. Um, do you have a second? Yes, sir. Seconded by Commissioner Stanton. Um, any further discussion? Clerk, could you please call roll? Chair Levin. Yes. Vice Chair Marino. Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? I'm staying. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Cindy Daniels? Yes. Okay, so next is the site plan. Um, Thank you, guys. Oh, you're back on oh, Sorry. Um, so, I guess, in this case, the parking requirement would be, 
I guess, what was the maximum occupancy of the restaurant fee? With bar, um, we're probably looking at around 50 to, if we really squeeze them in like sardines, which I'm not planning on doing, 50 to 60 people. So that'd be like the maximum, like fire code or whatever. Well, it might actually be on those plans too. Yeah, if you scroll up, um, it does have floor plan. And it might say on the floor plan, like maybe on the notes. Ooh, there you go, yeah. Some of these are listed as sport costs, but I don't want them to be because I feel like it's going to be too cramped. So I. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Doesn't say. Oh. Could be on the. Capacity? Here, go to the. <laughs> It'd be 22 required parking spaces. So is that parking, sorry to interrupt, is that parking spaces that would like be on the property? You could um, have, it doesn't have to be on the property, you can okay. share parking with another property owner. Uh -huh. You could have... Um, Street parking, well, does that count? Not necessarily, okay. I don't believe, but I think it'd be like a shared lot. But okay. like, as I said before, the Planning Commission does have the ability to require as much or as little parking as right. necessary. Right. Okay. So I'm just pointing that out because we had, you know, sub you know, pretty substantial litigation over parking. Okay. Over a separate project. And that is the one thing that my architect like brought to my attention. He was he's based in Syracuse, otherwise he'd be here with me to talk this over. But he did mention, you know, that's going to be the one little hiccup here. Most likely, is going to be parking and how we decide to move so, forward. I mean, I guess we'll open it up for discussion. From Planning Commission, do you want, does anyone want to share their opinion about the parking requirements? How many spots are there right now? Right now, we probably have enough room, I would say, for like at least 12 vehicles. Yeah, I mean, right now, the, a portion of the back is, is paved, and I would say there's probably room for maybe five or six cars in paved space right now. But the back lot, I mean, I, we can pass this around so you can see it. This is oh, the you're front to the front. Then. This is this yeah. is the aerial. Yeah. Well, the front has room for four cars. Yeah. But the rear, you know, this section here is blacktopped. Here, and you know, you can park probably four or five cars along this section. So you have 127 feet of depth. I mean, there, there's there's quite a bit of room yeah, I mean, on the lot. I mean, yeah. we, we can, we, we can so, create a schematic. So you, can, you can provide the parking within 250 feet of the building in that zone, too. Yeah, or we could just require no. no. So yeah, this, Do you want the grass? This, this is, yep, yeah, so this is, the, this is the paved parking right now. And then this is also part of the property. Ideally, I wouldn't like to pay there because I think eventually if things go well enough, I think it would be really cool to develop that into like a nice little like beer garden area. Um, and have some nice outdoor, nice outdoor venue for summertime. Just like, what, uh, have a, a pizza trailer back there and do wood fired pizza through a trailer and just do beer and pizza. Really simple, fun food. Um, but it is part of the property that, like we touched on, you can totally turn that into more parking if need be. It would also add substantial. It would also add to the project cost. Too. It would. It would. Right now, I mean, there's probably five spots. But yeah, but, like, but, but there's also like. You have Austria Park. There's like too. dozens Not of on streets, you know, more like orders of magnitude. Well, yeah, right. you said we could require as much or as little parking. Correct, we are. Why, why don't it. we just require as little parking? Right? So. Hey, that sounds, like, that sounds like a plan to me. And we can just say that, so that's kind of one of the provisions, provisos I wanted, you know, as part of the official record related to this site plan application is that in reviewing the site plan and related uses, of adjoining parcels and the street network, we've determined there's ample parking as is. And so therefore, we're waiving the minimum required parking as per the city of Long Island zoning code. I think, what was it, like 352 or something, whatever? There's a few. The, the exemption spot or the, yeah, it's like three. Yeah, I would support that. Is that, is that a motion? 
Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Uh, uh, so moved. Okay. Do I have a second? I have a question. Um, the driveway, where is that a road going? Okay. This? Yeah. So yeah, this, this is part of the project. This is just the driveway that leads to the parking spot. Also, to look like, I forgot the technical term, Roger. What is it? So like this is a deeded, it's a deeded right of way. That, that portion to the left, that, this home does not belong to the property. No. Um, this was Mary Cody's property. This was the Cody operation. So this now belongs to someone else. But this is a deeded right of way access here. And he actually has a superior easement right in this section here. He has ownership back in here. We have all that. Um, we, we could get it to your office so you could see it in black and white. But just to describe it, there is a preferred app easement that was purchased for here just because at, at the time when the photo operation was really rocking they, they needed to have the van access and usually with an easement you can't just sit you know you have to kind of use it but you can't really sit there but with a superior easement you can do that so this little section is superior this is just strictly a, a deeded right-of-way and access and easement to the back and then as Eric described you know he he kind of dog legs out in the back and and we have this so you can you can actually pass it around and see and how that goes. And looking at the site, you know, just the area and the nature of the neighborhood, it seems like a, several residential properties yeah. open up to that particular area. So I prefer, you know, that it be like either a beer garden or some other passive use as opposed to like a you know a parking lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that would a parking lot would kind of detract from that character of that neighborhood, whereas like a nice open space. Sure. Yeah, that's definitely not an immediate uh, yeah, and I, thing, but hopefully and down the road. And I think that, you know, if there's anything that we've learned in, in, the, um, in the city is that there's more than enough parking. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Um, yeah, so we have a motion and a second, we have discussion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? A second. Second by Commissioner Stang. So what is discussion? Um, Do you want is the code there any further discussion? Do you want the code section for that yes, part? Yes, please. It's 361G2. 361G2? Yes. That's your section for off street parking requirements. So I have the official minutes related to this meeting. Showing demonstrating that the planning commission took parking into consideration. Um, any further discussion? Has there been like the been just the neighbors and the neighbors? I'm sorry. For the neighborhood, like, is everyone like opposed to it? Have you had any So this this building is actually vacant. And no, it's not occupied. Um, but other, this this one is occupied right now. And then down that down towards River Street, you know, you have Dance Auto and the Stewarts. You have a couple houses across. Um, but not on like the surrounding areas. No. Okay. Yeah. Nothing, well, that, nothing, that, nothing that's been verbalized to me, at least. Okay. Yeah. You can totally ask them. Mm -hmm. I think the good thing about this project is it's not new construction. It's actually, you know, it was used as a restaurant prior like the previous tenant was like a deli yeah it was um, yeah. which i used to go to after the league games but, oh. um, but then it was used as like kind of a food service business for many many years so i think the neighbors are kind of used to it i think and it's allowed it's an allowed use of code um which is good yeah, yeah. Um, is there any further uh discussion um hearing that quick could you please call roll carol yes Vice Chair Marino? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Dyson? Yes. Commissioner Zinkin? Yes. Oh. Okay, so I thought it was approved. Thank you very much for your time and welcome to Lenya. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys. Can I just say something? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I used to work in the victory store, uh, in the supermarket, on Saturday morning the Foley truck would come over there and they would unload loads and loads of fresh baked bread and it was still hot and people would come in and buy a box of fresh food. Yeah, I, I, I've heard nothing but like fond memories and really great stories about what it used to be and the legacy that it had. So that's, I'm, that's part of the reason, honestly, I'm really excited to 
be in the building and hopefully carry it on in some sense or another. So actually, we need. I mean, uh, the clerk made me aware that the motion was actually waived for parking requirements, so we need a motion to approve this thing. I got too excited. Yeah. Okay, but that's, you know, I'm glad the team after this way, there's several of those. I like that, yeah. All right, so is there, do I have a motion to approve the site plan as presented? No. Motion made by Commissioner Marino, I have a second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Sangetti Daniels. Any further discussion? Questions? Okay, I'm um, hearing none. Could you please call roll? Chair Lapham? Yes. Vice Chair Marino? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? I'm staying. Commissioner Diving? Yes. Commissioner Sangetti Daniels? Yes. Now okay, site plan is approved. All right, for real this time. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Trying to create a little bit of a parking area out back uh, of the office. We purchased the property off the neighbor. Um, the neighbor directly behind it. Do have some pictures. Kind of want to consult with those guys because they did a lot better than I did as far as presentation. Here. Um, I do have some pictures to show if you're interested. Uh, this neighbor right behind you with that wall and you're stuffing it up, probably 20 feet of parking. Probably about a month. Uh, Greg and Tice contacted me, and then 
mention that. Steve had mentioned that, so we haven't been. But in all fairness, I mean, even right off the bat, we meet literally once. Either every morning, leave at night, it is like usually aimed out away from this house. And there is, that picture shows, a fence back. There is lattice, it is his. I would have added some sort of additional protection. We finished it late November. Obviously, the frozen ground didn't allow me to do that. If necessary, I'll be more than happy to uh, you know, put up the fence in as soon as possible. How close to the fence is this? So the parking areas, I mean, the setback's five feet. I mean, there's no, so as long as he's five feet off the property line, right. you can park a car. Okay. So I think, I think the one thing that, you know, I appreciate your attention, Mr. Sisson's condition. Um, and I think that, you know, in terms of our code, we do, you know, it does require, you know, buffering fence. So that's something that we can require. I think the other, I think the other issue is, you know, it has to do with uh, coverage. Um, you know, we did receive a letter from professional engineers outlining, basically asserting that the stormwater impact of the proposed parking lot is, you know, will be minimal. Right. And I kind of, you know, I tend to agree in looking at it. It's a previously disturbed site. It's in a built-up area. It's less than an acre. It won't require a um, speedy's permit or anything any major stormwater controls. So I think that's kind of a, you know, the runoff issue is, you know, a non-issue. I think that no matter what you did in that kind of small of a lot, if you had a major rain event, that water would just go off the property anyway. So I think that it seems, you know, it's, a, it's not enough of an impact to require any substantial right. stormwater control, in my opinion. Um, so I guess, what we would start off with is that, you know, classifying the action under Seeker, State Environmental Quality Review Act, um, pretty clear this is type two action, kind of basically the same thing, construction or addition of spaces under 4,000 square feet. Um, I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Dagan. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Marino. Any further discussion? Well, obviously the new fencing addressed Mr. Sosaman's concerns with the lights. I mean, ultimately, it, uh, it's going to be, this is what's there. There's a garage, a gazebo, and that. This is what we should have packed. This house is right there. So this fence is about seven feet high. It is lattice. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll put something more solid up that you know we do that. And again, there's literally going to be two cars parking in the south and the doctor. It's not going to be a, you know a patient scenario where people are going to have parking. They park up top uh, and they come and go once in a given day. Usually come when it's light. We potentially when it's dark, obviously in the winter time. But we are back in and then it will continue to back in. So there's not going to be any head activities. I mean, that was, like I said, this is where I had my tape one when they, they actually did pull in, so it wasn't like beaming up yeah. the house. I mean, in the sense of the condition, conversely, we were trying to, uh, you know, as soon as I got a call, honestly, I'm not looking to bother anybody or create any problems with anybody. We just need additional parking, and they put the block wall right there. Uh, uh, I think we have a question from Councilman Esprit If the fence is that the neighbor put up is seven feet, and typically, we allow a six foot tall fence, but this board does have the ability to grant a higher so fence. The correct. requirement for this for parking area buffering is not lattice, it's a solid fence, so it would have to be a right. solid material fence. Right. Or a vegetative buffering. Right. My, my point though is typically we do a six foot fence, but this board can approve an eight foot fence. Can seven foot fence. We can, we the can total allows for seven feet. Seven feet, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I think that kind of the direction that I would go in is, you know, I think that you know, the you know, putting installing a um, seven foot privacy fence that kind of near matches the dimension is probably, you know, is required by our code as a buffering area or a vegetative buffer, whatever it would appropriately screen um, the light, you know, potential light impact as uh, coming from the property, I think, um, and I do, again, I do appreciate your attention, your neighbor's concerns, it, you know, that's, that's helpful for us. 
Um, so I think that you know, in terms of this commission, you know, the site plan is pretty straightforward. The parking, you know, the intensity of the parking use is relative is very small. It's like two people essentially. Sure. Two possibly a staff member. Yeah. So I I think in terms of the you know what we're looking at as a commission is um, what type of buffer that we would require, and then kind of like a time you know to see if we can get an agreeable mutually agreeable timeline to have that installed. As part of the motion of site plan approval, we had a previous we had previous applications where there's no timeline for the installation of the fence, and so you know I opened that up for discussion prior to um, site plan a vote on the site plan. It's like what kind of fencing you know or screening would we would the commission feel is appropriate for this particular application? We talk about that now, or you want to vote on this? No, we we, we about, or talk about it now first because that would be a condition of our site plan. Pending motion proceed. Well, motion motion proceed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pending motion proceed. I'm off today. All right. So I guess we have a motion second already. Wouldn't that be kind of what Mr. Sanders wants? I mean, well, what do you prefer? Well, what would we like to know before we make a decision? For the fencing? Yeah. Same. I was thinking of a wooden, you know, the, wooden slide fence is is what the new set of size. Five four foot if it's vegetative and five foot if it's. So I was basically going to try to put, you know, roughly five foot of, of the That's what you slots. want, right? So, you know, I'm open to anything, but I figured oh, okay. that, that would be, you know, adequate and probably most cost effective. Sure. So why don't we vote on the seeker classification first? Um, so, Claire, could you please call roll? Chair Levin? Yes. Vice Chair Marino? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Uh, so next is the site plan. So I think uh, Commissioner Stanton has proposed the installation of a five foot tall wooden privacy fence. Yes. Is that something that's agreeable to the commission? Do we feel that there needs to be anything more? I think. So the, ma the maximum height is seven. I mean, fence paneling is sold. You know, and standard height. So, yeah, we don't want the, the likelihood that he's going to be able to find a five foot high fence is probably low. Yeah, you'd want a six foot high. Like, I think that's standard. Yeah, they, they sell like standard height stockade fence, which is why they go seven feet. So, you can say, say a fence uh, five foot, between five foot and seven foot. There you go. Yeah, we can just say, yeah. And then, in terms of a timeline, like when would you anticipate having the work done? I mean, I'll say as soon as the ground falls or you get the post. So in the spring, yeah. Next week, yeah. It's going to be like 55. <laughs> yeah. We could, I guess we could speak for like, you know, June, end of June. I'd be before that, truthfully. Yeah, so I'd be that because I'll do it as soon as we get to the end of the end. I mean, 90 days will be May. Yeah, so within 90 days, how about that? Yeah. Okay. I'll okay. absolutely do that. Okay. Um, Question Does that need to go? All the way around or just across the back? So the only part that's adjacent to a residential zone is the like, straight the back. backs onto the, yeah. okay. so the sides are still in you too. So, so okay. you, would, you, you would just have to go across the back. back spot. That's fine, a little better anyway. Would it have to extend past the fence, the existing fence there to cover the garage or no? I'll go past the garage. I'll go from property line to property line. That's fine. So I mean, the code just specifies where light from vehicles could shine into adjacent residential uses. That's like the code's generic language. So I mean, obviously, like in theory, a garage is probably not going to be, you know, negatively impacted by headlights. But obviously, like some of the backyard is so. If he's willing, I mean, if you're just going to go properly. Yeah, obviously has an issue with it, so I'll go across there, so there's no issue. I mean, that, that's the best way to do it, because that way I don't have to go do it again. That could be pretty so. straight. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, you know, the condition of our site plan approval would be to install the fence. Uh, oh, Regina, privacy fence between five and seven feet high within 90 days that extends from property line to property line, abutting Mr. Sisselman's property. Didn't we have the word board in there too before? Yeah, what in privacy fence. Yeah. Is that agreeable? Yes. Okay, perfect. So 
Um, I guess we had entertained a motion um, for site plan approval with the conditions previously stated. So moved. I'll second. A motion made by Commissioner Stanton, seconded by Commissioner St. Jay Daniels. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, please call roll. Chair Levin? Yes. Vice Chair Marino? Yes. Commissioner Stanton? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. 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 I guess if there's no new business. I, I might bring it. Okay. Sure. I don't know what to start with. But uh, there's a problem with the traffic on Church Street. And the college kids Zoom is straight. They Zoom from Center Street down to uh, Chestnut Street. And I think a way that I'd be able to control it is to recommend that we put up a stop sign, three-way stop at the corner of Walden Street and Church Street, so that they at least have to slow down once before proceeding on. That might make things a lot safer. I just don't know if it's the Planning Commission's purview. Other planning committees. Hmm? There's no planning committee in whatever they call that. Quality, quality of I think that. Generic, generic committee with limited well, I I wouldn't jump to putting a stop light there. No, a just stop light a because stop sign. that'll be expensive. A three-way stop sign. We could talk about it. I think I'd want to talk to DPW and get yeah. DPWs. Um, let them them do the work on it to see if it's something that can be done, or if we do it, it's going to create other problems. So what right. I just pull one out. I, yeah, that, that would be oh, good. I oh, hope, oh, hope you would bring it up right. for that. Yeah, I mean, no, that's been done under good place already. So. I think like it'd be interesting to try a you know one of those you could have those kind of drawn 3D crosswalks that raise up. But I mean, I think that one of the issues that a lot of you know our road infrastructure in the city has is that you know, look at Market Street for example. It's like you have a design speed that's very high, so you people feel comfortable driving at high speeds even though the speed limit is very low. Yeah, the they go, they zoom on right. so, so, I mean, I, I'd like to see a lot of those kind of street yeah. design improvements, yeah. like, well, you know, at least, the thing is, we're not going to make those recommendations to slow traffic down, Yeah. Um, because, um, you know, I think that those would improve the quality of life. They are germane to planning because transportation, you know, yeah. transportation is kind of something that we look at in our site plan approval process. And I think I think it would improve the quality of life, and it's a really minor inconvenience. Besides, there's a, an advantage to it because when you pull on to Church Street from Walnut Street, you, people are zooming. You have to zoom around to get out from around. Yeah. If we if they had to stop at that sign, then you. On, on Wall Street, you can pull out safely. So it's a safety issue. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of, I think there's all sorts of techniques that can be evaluated based on cost. I mean, the other side is that you could have, you know, curve bump outs at that intersection and make that, you know, make it a little tighter. You could also, like, you know, improve sidelines by taking away one of the on street parking spots that prevent people from seeing when they turn. Yeah, whatever, you know, all sorts whatever of they sports. think is best. Yeah, it's yeah, of course. Idea. Yeah, I mean, I would upset a lot of people that use that as a cut through. I'm guilty of doing that as well. But <laughs> there, I drive slow. I, I'm like, I go pretty slow. But the, you know, once I'm on 88, I'm in trouble. Though. I'll bring this up to our city administrator and engineering to bring forward a recommendation for how to slow traffic down. Yeah, and then there were, there were, I mean, one piece of, piece of new business is I, I've been um, contacted by a nonprofit called Center for Property Tax Reform. They're an advocacy group uh, pushing for the concept of land value taxation. Um, and they're asking about doing informational presentations. And I haven't responded to them yet. Um, but I just thought I'd bring that up. Thank you.
Yeah, I mean, I I'm always open to presentations myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there'd be no action that be required that it was saying to do an informational presentation. Did we, uh, can I, do we, what's the status of the zoning code? It's should. It's in, it's in effect. It's got a. Uh, when is it officially in, in place, though? It's officially in place now. I'd have to look at the date, but it uh, becomes effective when I file it with the Department of State. Okay, so it's done. So I have confirmation that they received it. So, yeah, it's on my way. So, are we, are you still, is your office still planning on developing, going out? Yep. Gotcha. That's the idea. I, I think that, you know, one thing I would like to see is, the con you know, the complete overhaul of the zoning code. Not just for downtown, but like, yeah, he's working on it. You know, the, I, I would su fully support a transect-based code. I'd even go farther to suggest, you know, to try to convince the town to do a zoning code overhaul as well. The town? Um, it's not outside of our purview, but <laughs> stop. Yeah. Anyway, so if there's no further business, um, motion to adjourn. Someone. Second. Second. Oh, yes. All those in favor?